When somebody says wheeled tanks, the first vehicles most people think of are probably the Italian Centauro or the South African Roycat, both of which are pretty recent designs. In reality, though, the first vehicles of this type appeared as early as in the first half of the 20th century. John Walter Christie, a talented American engineer, came forward with the idea for a design that made them possible, and the Soviet military were daredevil enough to roll with it. And so, in the interwar period, the Red Army received their first highly mobile, convertible tanks with a unique wheels and track system. They were known as BT tanks, with BT standing for Bistrachodny tank, or high-speed tank. During the late 1920s, Christie developed a unique suspension system where each wheel had its own spring-loaded assembly, in theory allowing for unprecedented high-speed cross-country mobility. Fast-moving tanks fitted with this suspension would be paired with slower, tracked vehicles, giving the army more options in the field. At the time, the novel idea didn't attract a lot of support in the US, but it caught the attention of the Soviet Commission that went abroad in search of new military technologies. Initially, the Soviet armor doctrine had no real place for high-speed tanks, but soon they became a valuable asset due to both the geopolitical factors of the time and the fact that these tanks could be produced cheaply and en masse. The USSR had plans to license the technology and even ordered a few prototypes, but soon ended the partnership with Christie due to trade frictions. In 1931, two tanks without turrets made it to the Soviet Union where they received the designation BT-1 and underwent a lot of modifications. Soviet engineers introduced a number of changes to the design and equipped the vehicles with turrets housing a 37mm gun. Those models went into production as the BT-2. Even the earliest models had the signature traits of the series, a long body with a turret in the front, and a massive chassis with large road wheels, thanks to the incorporation of the Christie suspension. For the very same reason, those tanks had cramped interiors, thin armor, and they also bounced noticeably whilst on the move. On the other hand, BT tanks were an excellent platform for powerful armaments and had great potential for further development. At the very beginning of the production cycle, though, the unreliability of its systems and the complexity of the gun were probably the biggest hurdle, as their production was a big challenge for the nascent Soviet industry. Factories were slow to ramp up production due to the onslaught of manufacturing defects. The first batches of tanks broke down right after rolling off the factory floor. The time was ripe for introducing an improved design with all the kinks ironed out. The important bit was to make improvements without changing too many systems or much of the tank's layout. Here, the result of that effort, the BT-5, a stopgap version of the tank with the same hull, but with a new cylindrical turret housing a 45mm 20K gun. The Soviets succeeded in bringing the production quality of the series to adequate levels, and the new tank turned out to be an effective vehicle that proved its worth in combat. Even with its thin armor, which was terribly outdated by that time, the BT-5 still had its uses at the end of the decade when the Soviets started clashing with the Japanese. Soviet engineers kept on iterating the design. After the BT-5, there was the BT-7. It had the same armament, but was considerably more reliable and easier to manufacture. In the end, it was the BT-7 that became the most produced vehicle of the series, with more than 5,000 BT-7s rolling off the factory floor. All the while, there were only 2,000 BT-5s made, and only 700 BT-2s. The last production version of the tank was the 1939 version of the BT-7, 
also known as the BT-7M. Compared to its predecessors, the vehicle featured better suspension and a new V2 diesel engine. The remote descendants of this engine are still being used by the Russian army. Furthermore, even before the first production BT-7 was made, engineers started working on a version of the tank armed with a 76mm cannon. The switch to a larger caliber took more time than expected though, and eventually the idea was dropped, as more advanced tank designs were already underway. BT tanks were in production up until 1939 and in service throughout the whole war. By that time, the vehicle was very outdated, but given the circumstances, Soviet tankers couldn't afford the luxury of being picky. Most importantly, tanks of the BT family served as the basis for the iconic T-34, the most produced and the most famous Soviet tank of all time. Simultaneously, the revolutionary Christie suspension became a very important milestone on the way to develop a more conventional torsion bar system, which is still widely used to this day.